Hello. Today's topic is habituation and sensitization. And uh, these uh, two concepts uh, uh, have to do with elicited behavior and they're relevant to all kinds of elicited behavior, particularly orienting responses and attentional responses. And I'm going to illustrate these two concepts uh, uh, by talking about their relevance uh, to uh, music and the enjoyment of music. Now, one of the strange things about music is that we uh, are very uncomfortable and uh, we don't enjoy music that's highly unpredictable. So if I played a series of notes, uh, uh, a series of notes that were just a random pitches and random durations and random intensities of sound. In fact, I can't even do that because the, our nervous system innately imposes structure on something. So you'd have to get a computer program to produce these random sounds. And if I played you those random sounds, it wouldn't become one of the top 10 uh, uh, list of uh, things that people love to listen to. In fact, people would hate to listen to it and uh, you wouldn't get many downloads. So music is interesting uh, if you can kind of predict what's gonna happen, okay? So given that uh, state of affairs, I'll play you a, a series of notes where you can easily predict what's gonna happen. Do you want me to continue? That is the easiest way to make something predictable is to repeat it. But if you repeat it, the more often you repeat it, <laughs> you know, you build up habituation. Uh, the attentional response, the orienting response habituates. And after a while, after a while you quit hearing it. And if you, if you don't quit hearing it, you really get annoyed about it. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to listen to it anymore. It becomes kind of ugly, and you like, give me a different note, uh, which kind of uh, uh, illustrates how uh, you can get release from habituation. Uh, if if you introduce a note, you habituate to that that particular note, a G in this case, and you have not habituated to other notes. So if another note comes up, all of you're going to pay attention. So uh, by varying the notes, you uh, avoid the buildup of habituation. So that's one of the ways to get rid of habituation. Another way to get rid of habituation is to wait a while. So you haven't heard uh, those notes I played in the beginning. And uh, after a while, you kind of got tired of it, right? So uh, did you pay attention? Probably a lot more so than after I played the note 10 times. So the first couple of times, after a period of rest, your attentional response uh, returns. And that's called spontaneous recovery. I'm going to play you a piece of uh, music that was composed by Johann Sebastian Bach. And uh, one of the things you'll notice in this piece is that he repeats things uh, for the sake of making them familiar so that uh, you kind of come to expect what's going to happen next. Keep in mind that you need some repetition so the music doesn't get ugly. If you can't predict what's going to happen at all, uh, then it's then it's not pleasant. So the the piece starts out with this, and what you'll notice, you, some of you may recognize this as the uh, first movement of the first of the cello suites written by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> What you notice about this that each phrase is repeated twice. That was two of those, and after those rep two repetitions, he changes some notes. That was repeated twice, and then he changes some more notes. 
and so on. So he keeps changing the uh, uh, how those uh, patterns are repeated uh, by changing the notes, which causes a release from vibration, and occasionally goes back to the original one after a period of time, uh, which uh, allows spontaneous recovery to take place. So that's habituation. Now there is an, an independent process, another way to get rid of habituation, and we're always kind of, particularly in the arts, you're fighting habituation. You don't want people to be bored <laughs> with what they're looking at, what they're hearing, what they're listening to. Uh, you don't want them to be bored by what they're tasting. So in culinary arts, the same kind of thing. And uh, professors giving lectures. I don't want you to be bored. God forbid that you habituate to, to my voice and the things that I say. And so I got to do crazy stuff to vary it up so that you won't habituate. Uh, one way to overcome habituation is to impose sensitization on the system. And sensitization uh, can be uh, created by introducing a new stimulus as you go back to the original one. And there is a section in this um, uh, first movement of, uh, of the Bach cello suites that's very much like this. So... <laughs> So in this section, this note is repeated over and over and over again. But you don't get really bored with it because each time it's played, it's preceded by a different note. And that's what makes the repetition of this one uh, maintain some interest. That, this phenomenon is called dishabituation. Dishabituation is a sensitization effect. Another way to create sensitization is to just make things really loud or fast or exciting in some way. So uh, now I'm going to play you the entire piece. I only take, it takes a couple of minutes, so <laughs> be patient. Or if you hate the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, you can turn this off. <laughs> I hope you won't turn it off. I practiced this a long time to provide a good performance here. Uh, and so as you're listening to this performance, think about where is habituation happening? How does a change in the notes uh, cause release from habituation? Uh, where does is spontaneous recovery happening? Is there sensitization going on? Uh, because of the introduction of novel notes among repeated uh, notes, and uh, uh, is loudness used to create sensitization. So I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> Oh. Um. 
anybody asleep? I hope not. I hope there was enough sensitization going on there, particularly at the end. Things got really loud. They got fast. There were a lot of repeated notes, but they didn't get boring because habituation was overwhelmed by a sensitization process to maintain your interest. And I kind of got a little out of breath here. <laughs> well, uh, though that's habituation and sensitization. And what's remarkable about this piece of music, this piece of music was written 300 years ago, and it's still played quite frequently. Yo-Yo Ma did a performance of all of the cello suites uh, on uh, uh, national television a couple of weeks ago uh, in uh, honor or in, in uh, as, as a offering for people struggling with the coronavirus. But you, uh, people keep playing, musicians love these pieces. Uh, people keep playing these pieces. Uh, so uh, this music has lived on for 300 years. Now, habituation and sensitization, of course, are not just relevant to classical music, music of Bach and Beethoven and so on. They're highly relevant in popular music. Uh, music of Bruce Springsteen, Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Justin uh, Timberlake. What's remarkable uh, to me <laughs> as, a, uh, as a musician and as a psychologist is that the music that uh, Bruce Springsteen plays and all these popular musicians play is really boring. <laughs> Excuse me, I hope I'm not offending anybody. But the music doesn't have a lot going on in it. It doesn't have anywhere near the kind of stuff going on that Bach put into this composition that I just played. There's a lot of repetition. There's, in particular, a, a lot of repetition in the, in the basic rhythm. I mean, the drummer plays the same rhythm throughout the whole song in most songs. There's a little variation here and there. So why are we not really bored? with these performances. We're not bored with these performances because they are, these performances, um, music is not, I hate to say it, it's not the main point of the performance. There are extravagant costumes, there's extravagant choreography, uh, there's a lot of rapid movement on stage. Uh, the music is typically played very loud. If you go to a rock concert, you uh, probably best uh, uh, wear some earplugs because the uh, intensity of the sound is so loud that it's, it causes hearing uh, loss. It causes damage to the ear. It's the loudness that creates sensitization. It's a laser show, the uh, fire, uh, jets of fire that blow, you know, shoot up into the sky periodically during the performance. It's, uh, and the uh, performers encourage the audience to engage in physical exercise. I mean, you're, you're asked to clap, right? <laughs> and you're asked to wave back your hand. I went to a, a concert one time and the performer asked uh, people in the audience to jump up and down in rhythm to the music. Why are they asking you to do all those things? Because physical exercise, you can't be bored, you can't fall asleep, you can't uh, uh, you know, quit paying attention to stuff if you're jumping up and down. <laughs> jumping up and down causes sensitization. Uh, moving, uh, physical movement causes sensitization. Loudness causes sensitization. And of course, lots of spectacular visual laser things and, and uh, choreography and costumes and suggestive uh, clothing and so forth. All of that cause uh, sensitization. And because of that sensitization, we remain interested in the song, which on the face of it is not that interesting. And uh, if uh, uh, you, you want to think about how those compositions musically compared to J.S. Bach, you, uh, consider, ask the question, are we going to be listening to these Justin Timberlake songs 
300 years from now. I rather doubt it. <laughs> so I don't want I don't want to uh, ruin your enjoyment of popular music, but I just wanted to uh, uh, tell you uh, how habituation and sensitization are involved in these art forms and all kinds of other uh, areas of endeavor. And uh, I hope you found this interesting. And if it if you didn't, you should jump up and down and cause sensitization so that you, you reactivate your orienting response. Thanks a lot, folks, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>